Hello and welcome to another episode of History Stuff. So in the previous two videos I did a short overview of the career of William Wallace, the famous Scottish resistance fighter, and in this one I wanted to focus on another figure of the Scottish Wars, a slightly more obscure and controversial one, John Common of Badenoch. So who was John Common? Well, he was a member of a very influential uh, Scottish family, the Commons. Um, they had played a, a very prominent role in Scottish politics uh, for many years before the Wars of Independence started against Edward I. And when they did start in 1296, they chose to support the King of Scots, John Balliol, against Edward. Their rivals, the Bruces at this point, were very much fighting for Edward. So uh, at this point, you basically had two rival factions in Scotland. Uh, you had um, the Balliol Scots on the one hand, that is John Balliol and his common supporters, among others. And then on the other hand, you've got the Bruces. And now the Bruces were fighting for Edward because they hoped that if he could defeat Balliol and his common supporters, he would place a Bruce on the throne. What they didn't realise is that Edward by this stage had decided... He wasn't going to mess around with kings of Scotland anymore. He was just going to tear up Scottish independence and sovereignty and uh, make Scotland merely a part of England, essentially. It would become an appendage of the, of the crown and the kingdom of England. But the commons uh, are actually fighting for an independent Scotland. Um, unfortunately for them, this opening stage of the war goes very badly. Uh, John Common and his uh, allies are defeated and captured at Dunbar. Uh, Balliol himself is captured by Edward I, he's deposed, he's formally deposed as King of Scots and taken into uh, custody in the Tower of London, while uh, the other Scottish prisoners, including John, are also imprisoned. Um, they're held in prison for uh, the best part of a year until Edward is uh, very much in need of men to help him fight the, Fen the French in Flanders. So he offers to release some of his Scottish prisoners if they will agree to serve him in Flanders. Um, and John is one of these. But while he does go overseas with Edward's army, he deserts at the first chance he can get. Um, he abandons the English army and he rushes off to Paris to beg Edward's enemy, Philip the Fair, the King of France, to help the Scots. Um, at this point, however, Philip refuses because he's just struck a truce with Edward and he's not willing to do anything to, to risk that. So Common is forced, John Common is forced to return to Scotland. Um, but uh, even though um, he's not being very successful at this stage, um, it is very clear to see Common's motives. Um, he's very much committed to restoring the independent kingdom of Scotland and doing whatever he can to, to defeat Edward. Uh, this leads on to the Battle of Falkirk in 1298, uh, where Edward defeated William Wallace. Um, one of the later charges thrown against John Common was that he betrayed Wallace on the battlefield and that he led the Scottish cavalry off the field at the crucial moment and left poor old Wallace and his men to be slaughtered. Uh, this is one of many um, false charges, really, that were thrown at Common by uh, later Scottish writers such as uh, John Forden and John Barber, who were all um, Bruce propagandists, essentially, and they were trying to give the pro-Bruce version of events. Um, and uh, this is all part of... Um, when the Bruces eventually achieved power in Scotland, uh, Robert the Bruce became Robert I, King Robert I of Scotland. Uh, he and his successors embarked upon this very calculated um, propaganda campaign uh, in which they tried to make themselves look as heroic and amazing as possible and painted everyone else, all of their rivals and their enemies, in as, as black a light as possible. Um, I should say I'm not necessarily condemning the Bruce faction for doing this because they're only doing what anyone else did in similar circumstances. Um, the most obvious comparison in my opinion would be the Tudor dynasty in England. As many of you will know when the Tudors uh, defeated and killed Richard III one of the first things they did was to blacken his name. They, um, they pretended that he was some kind of terrible hunchback monster who murdered his nephews and did all sorts of horrible things. Uh, and while there might be a grain of truth to some of the charges, it was all spin, really, and, and propaganda, exaggerated for maximum political effect. Um, and the reason uh, people like uh, Henry Tudor and Robert the Bruce did these things is because, because they were usurpers. Um, they had no real claim to the throne except through um, uh, well, military force, really brute force. Um, so in order to, to bolster their very unsteady position, one of the obvious things to do was to make their predecessors look as bad as possible. 
Um, and that was what was done to uh, John Comyn, poor old John. Um, and in the years after the Battle of Falkirk, there is this ongoing power struggle in Scotland between the rival factions. Um, Robert the Bruce and John Comyn for a time serve as co-guardians. They are um, given shared responsibility for defending Scotland against Edward. But it soon becomes clear that they can't work together because apart from having rival ambitions, they just don't like each other on a personal level. Um, at one point, uh, they have a very uh, uh, savage argument, which actually turned into a brawl, into a physical fight. Comyn leaps at Bruce and, and grabs him around the neck and does his best to strangle him, and he has to be dragged off. Um, and very soon after that, uh, Bruce resigns his position as guardian, and his next significant action is to actually abandon the Scots altogether and uh, join Edward again. Um, and he's doing this for the same reasons um, as his father and grandfather. They want to be king of Scots, um, and they are prepared to do absolutely anything to, to achieve that aim, including um, allying with the English when it suits them, and with, and with Edward. But the Commons are much more consistent. Um, John, in the following years, he becomes the effective head of Scottish resistance. Uh, he's very much in charge of the military side of things. Um, he adopts this kind of guerrilla style warfare, which Bruce will later make his own. Uh, after the Battle of Falkirk, the Scots are very careful to avoid open battle against the English. Instead, they adopt this sort of um, scorched earth style of warfare, which is quite effective at keeping the English at bay for several years. Um, and then in early 1303, uh, Comyn actually wins a um, quite impressive victory at Roslyn, the Battle of Roslyn. He manages to ambush um, one part of the English army and defeat it. Um, and while the Battle of Roslyn is commemorated in Scotland, it's, it's nowhere near as, as famous as the likes of uh, Stirling Bridge or Bannockburn. Um, I mean, you can argue that the, the scale of the battle was exaggerated by Scottish writers and it didn't really have any long term uh, effect on the war. But then um, you could say the same pretty much for Stirling Bridge. Um, I mean, that didn't end the wars of independence, far from it. Or even Bannockburn, even though it was a spectacular Scottish victory, it didn't put an end to this war. I mean, these Anglo-Scottish wars, the wars of independence, as we call them, they, they rumbled on for decades afterwards. Um, and battles didn't really, um, they didn't really have any sort of uh, long-term effect, usually. Um, but the Battle of Roslyn in early 1303, which is very much John Comyn's victory, uh, it was a much needed morale booster for the Scots, if nothing else, at a pretty bleak time, because by this point, Edward is starting to get the upper hand. Um, he's made a final peace with France, so he no longer has that distraction, and he can throw everything he's got at Scotland. Uh, and John Comyn, uh, once again, is in charge of the defence. Um, and uh, he, he puts up a pretty tough fight um, when Edward brings his army over the border again. Um, the Scots have managed to hold out for several months, even though Edward is really bringing um, quite unbearable pressure to bear on them. Um, at this point, he's, he's attacking on all sides. Um, he leads his own army uh, into northern Scotland, which is the Scottish heartlands. It's where John Comyn has his estates, and he marches all over them. At the same time, he lands an Irish army in Western Scotland. Um, he's got other forces in play elsewhere. Um, and uh, he wears down the Scots, really. And it, it soon becomes clear that they're going to have to um, offer a surrender. But this isn't an unconditional surrender. Uh, John Comyn takes charge of the negotiations with Edward in um, 1304. Um, and this is a very much a compromise whereby um, in exchange for their surrender and renewing their oaths of fealty, Edward agrees to take or to include a great number of Scots in his new administration of Scotland. So this is much more a sort of even affair. Um, it's much more of a compromise than previously. And this is largely due to Commons' influence. He manages to persuade Edward to accept these terms. Um, so uh, once again, you know, Common is a very prominent figure. And while he's doing all this, while he's doing everything he can to preserve Scotland, or if he can't actually defeat Edward, get him to accept some kind of compromise, Bruce is uh, very much fighting for the English. I mean, he spends four years fighting for Edward. 
And when the, the Scots uh, finally surrender in 1304 and 1305, he, he is, he's in Edward's camp. He's um, very much on the side of the, of the King of England. Um, so this leads on to the most controversial episode uh, in Common's career. Uh, in 1306, he agrees to meet uh, with Bruce at a church in Dumfries. Um, and all we really know, if you strip away all the conflicting accounts and all of the various propaganda, is that the two men had an argument, another one, um, and like their previous arguments, it turned violent again. But this time, uh, Bruce drew a knife. He pulled a knife on Colin and he stabbed him. Um, and Bruce has got uh, a number of friends with him. Uh, and Colin's only companion is his uncle, Robert. And he's also stabbed. Poor old Robert. Hardly anyone mentions him whenever anybody talks about this incident. Robert is very much a forgotten man. But um, he and John are repeatedly stabbed. Um, think of Julius Caesar being stabbed on the Ides of March. It's a bit like that. And they're left to, to bleed to death um, next to the high altar of the church. Um, and this is a really shocking crime by medieval standards. Um, to murder someone in that way was, you know, pretty beyond the pale anyway. I mean, they did have standards, these people. There was such a thing as, as, a, as a criminal crime, uh, committing an offence. Um, but also it's done in a church, which is sacrilege. Um, and it's... Um, it, w it was considered pretty shocking, pretty um, unspeakable. Um, and once again, uh, later Bruce writers, they had to rationalise it somehow. They had to somehow make their hero, Robert Bruce, look as, as, as heroic as possible, even though it's very difficult when you look at his action. I mean, he's, he's lured a man to a church and he's knifed him. What's heroic about that? So what they did is they fabricated this story that John Comyn had been um, plotting to betray Bruce to King Edward. And when Bruce um, got wind of this story, he invited Comyn to talk. And when he confronted Comyn with the um, story of his treachery, uh, Comyn turned nasty and Bruce was more or less obliged to stab him in self-defence. Um, and the story is preposterous. Uh, it was only invented many decades after, after the event by Bruce propagandists. And it was clearly concocted to rationalise what was considered at the time an appalling, unspeakable crime. But many people still believe it, and, and they really shouldn't, because um, poor old Common is very much the victim. Uh, Bruce's real reasons for stabbing Common was because he was in the way. As I said, the common faction were very powerful in Scotland, and if Bruce was going to ever become King of Scots, he had to do away with John Comyn just as much as he had to defeat the English, Edward I. Um, and um, in the aftermath, uh, Comyn's son, John Jr., was smuggled into England before the Bruces could get at him, uh, and he's raised in England, and he fights for Edward II, and eventually killed fighting the Bruce Scots at Bannockburn. Um, which should be seen as a tragedy, really, because um, Common was Common Junior was really fighting in order to avenge his father. Um, he was no traitor, uh, and when you look at Robert Bruce's actions, um, he was, you know, no innocent when it came to fighting for the English to suit his own interests. So that's my take on John Common. Uh, again, it's a very brief overview, a very complex character, and a very complex history. Um, but hopefully, it will give some food for thought. Okay, I hope you found that interesting. Thank you.